Good morning, Bakers. Welcome to our second episode of our 10-part series of how to establish a successful bakery in Kenya and any other part of the world. The steps from the first step to the last step. And remember, the last episode, before we move further, we talked about market research. That is in episode one. Check it on YouTube. And from that episode, you are supposed to come up with five important things. The location where you locate your bakery, strategic location. The product that you will bake, okay, based on your research. The quantity of that product. The competition, who else is baking that product? And the target customer, who are they? Where do they live? What age? What, where, how far is it from the bakery? And so on and so on. With these five uh, reasons or these five results you will arrive at the next two steps it will allow you to arrive at the next two steps which is the type of bakery to set up and the type of equipment which you are supposed uh, to use let's go to the first the type of bakery you are going to set up there are three possibilities based on your research either you'll do a hot bread cake shop that is in a busy place it could be an urban center a busy estate hot bread cake shop whereby you bake at the same place and the front part will be a shop so the front part will have a cake display counter a very nice bread display shelf for bread where you'll sell hot bread and even packed bread you can do bath the cakes that is a hot bread cake shop the second scenario it's a mini factory whereby you can locate it uh, you can locate it anywhere and you supply the customers in all over the place. Could be in your home, it could be in another building, not, uh, not in an urban setting. A large factory, it could be a go down where you'll produce in mass or whichever quantity, then use a means of distribution, a vehicle uh, that will take your product to the end user, for example, to a school, to a hospital, to an institution and so on and so forth. And remember on the same note, you will uh, need to invest in that case in a means of distribution and so on. That's why it's important for that. And the last model, which is the most, uh, one of the best models I've come across, to the, many clients have Im implemented this model, whereby the front part, yes, is a shop and the front part is a mini factory. So it's a combination of one and two. It's both, it's selling at the front and extra production is happening at the back and that production will be distributed elsewhere. That model is one of the best because it combines both A and B, and it means you will sell on the front. That money, you can use it to run the bakery or to, to produce more products that will go for distribution. So this becomes like a very effective model whereby you kill two birds with one stone and it becomes very successful. In that case, the front could be a very good retail uh, shop small big white and the back could be very large it could be even the size of a go down you're producing even to distribute thousands of products of packets of bread or cakes to other locations so that is as far as the type of bakery is concerned let's go to the type of equipment but before we go to the type of equipment i would want to sound sound some precautions that we have observed the last 10 years the mistakes that people make when purchasing bakery equipment. We'll go case by case. I just highlighted like five points. One, if you are going to do cakes, you have no business to buy dough mixer. You will buy what you call cake mixer or planetary mixer. Cake mixers are good because they have three mixing arms. Each arm is used for a particular uh, product for example the beta the hook and the whisk they'll give you different types of cakes or cookies depending on your target market that's why it's very important to get it right if i'm going to produce uh, cakes on black forest i'll buy a cake mixer with three hands because i'll use the whisk to produce sponge cakes which is black forest swiss roll and all the rest that is very important another mistake on the same issue of mixers most customers buy the cake mixer and try to use it for dough mixing to produce bread, buns, cones, and rolls. This is another big mistake that we have found because one, one, two things will happen in this case. One, you'll end up with a low quality dough. 
cake mixer is not made to mix very firmly and fastly and very good mix as opposed to a duff mixer so you you'll, yes you'll mix the duff but you'll end up with a low quality duff mix which will give you a low quality bread product the other issue is that you are straining the cake mixer remember cake mixer is meant to mix light cake mixtures unlike duff which is very tough and and elastic and strong so you need a, 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 dough, a dough mixer which has a stronger motor and stronger machine a stronger body which is well built and that is very important because customers keep on complaining i bought a uh, cake mixer but six months down the line it's broken down and so because they use the wrong machine for the long, wrong job that is another issue so the third issue on this issue of uh, to sound uh, another warning I've come ac across the last 10 years, customers buying pastry shita, yet they don't know what they are going to use it for. Remember, pastry shita or dough shita is meant to produce pastry products, like, uh, you know, uh, types of pastries, croissants, you know, meat pies and such kind of things, tarts and so on. So if your ma target market, and especially those products are for the high end target market, so if your target market is not in that, you don't need to spend over 500,000 Kenya shilling to buy a pastry shita, which will not use. I've seen one, two, three customers do that mistake in the period of 10 years. And it's so unfortunate because they end up buying the machine that will never be used. And immediately they buy, one month down the line, they are looking for a buyer for the same machine. So it's very important. That's why uh, you should be careful when you are doing that. The other thing I've seen, which comes to equipment, if you are going to produce birthday cakes, which are very thick, for example, 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters thick, you'd rather buy a deck oven because deck oven is well vast, is geared towards heating such thick cakes effectively and to make sure that the deep inside part is well baked because the bottom part of the deck oven heats up by conduction and the upper part by radiation. That combination of heat flow makes sure that you have a well-rounded, a well-baked thick cake. It is one of the only ovens that can be able to do that effectively. Now, let's assume that you're going to produce not bad cakes, you produce buns, scones, rolls, and bread. In that case, the best oven would be this type of oven, convection oven, we have from five tray all the way to 12 tray. And these types of oven can cater for bread buns from zero to 2000 packets. And we re recommend that this type of oven to use uh, electricity because electricity is efficient, very efficient with this kind of ovens, whereby the cost per, per packet or per loaf is less than one Kenya shilling. And that makes it very, very effective with electricity uh, consumption. What happens if I'm in the same business with buns, cones, and rolls, and I'm producing over 2,000 packets? For example, I want to produce 5,000 5, loaves. I would rather go for a diesel-powered, heavy-duty rotary oven setup. And in that case, uh, I will produce large-scale production of these products using my rotary-powered diesel oven. Another precaution that I would like to sound when, before you choose your equipment, depending on your location and depending on the oven that you choose, you might need to do what we call ducting. For example, I am setting up a, bake, a, a special bread factory inside an urban center with like 15 floors on it in the middle of the city. Rotary oven uses diesel and produces black smoke because of the diesel issue. So you have to know that in that case, you need to factor in ducting budget. Ducting, you'll, you'll, you'll duct the diesel chamber all the way to the top part of the building. And that is quite expensive. So it's something that you need to consider if you are using a, a rotary powered diesel oven in a, an urban setting. And that's why we recommend convection ovens or deck ovens in such settings to avoid the issue of ducting and so on and so on. So now that we've talked about the precautions you need to take 
uh, when it comes to machine, I'm going further into a very important thing. Now, I want to produce a thousand loaves. I've done my research and I've seen my target client is a school X. That school needs, for example, a thousand loaves. So what kind of capacity of equipment should I choose? In that case, you need to know that you will not go to a shop and buy an, a, a setup that will give you a thousand loaves at once. That will be very, very expensive. And you might not even recoup that cost in a lifetime because it will mean a very large oven that you switch on once and do, does a, a thousand loaves at a go. And you, then you switch it off and you go and you've done your job. Most customers have that uh, discussion, but I would discourage this kind of thing because you'll invest so much money in the initial, 10 times or 30 times you're supposed to invest. That's why we look at production quantity per hour. If I'm doing a thousand loaves, I'll take, for example, an oven capacity that can do a hundred loaves at a go in an, in, in an hour. Then I'll do a 10 hour shift, a 10 hour production time. So I'll have bakers working 10 hours, okay? Then I, they'll produce 100 per hour. So at the end of the 10 hours, I'll get my 1,000. So investing in such a bakery will cost you, let's say $10,000 or 1 million Kenya shilling. So or 1.2 million, depending on the oven or 1.8 million, depending if it's a conversion oven. Then that is the only way now you can be able to recoup the amount of money you invested. Because with a thousand loaves daily, if I'm making 10 shillings or 20 shillings per loaf, it's 20,000 per day net profit, which can be 20,000 or 10,000. So in a month, it will be 300,000 shillings all the way to 600,000. So it's 300,000 in 10 months. In six months, I will recover all the money I invested. And that's why the issue of capacity per hour and time, times 10 hours, that's how we look at it, so that you can recoup that investment within a period of six months or so. So that is very important. Unlike if I was to go and buy an oven that does a thousand loaves that ago, it will cost you over 20 million Kenya shillings. When will I recoup that money? And will I just pay bakers for, what, for switching on the oven for one hour, finish and go? And remember, for some ovens, efficiency is attained after the second hour. For example, diesel ovens. The first two hours, they consume a lot because they are heating up the metal. They are very heavy ovens over two, three tons. So in that case, after the second hour is when my saving kicks in. So that's why we production in a period of time is very, very important. Now that we've done that, as a baker, I will look for a company that will be able to take me through. And that's why Bakewave has structured itself to take through clients in this way. And I will go to our website, for example, take my phone, uh, go to Google. I'll search uh, Bakewave, Bakewave Limited, click on the website. And I click on the website. Bakewave has structured itself in that way to receive you once you reach this stage so that your your operations from this point become easy so once i uh, i get to the website back with limited i'm there there's about us section amazing offers as i scroll down our offer why there is two main buttons start my bakery and upgrade my bakery so if i'm starting my bakery i'll click the green button start my bakery when you start you click the green button you'll see seven packages no over 10 packages so package one which a cake setup package two 30 loaves per hour bread that is bread production 400 grams 60 loaves per hour 90 loaves per hour 120 loaves per hour 880 loaves per hour 140 loaves per hour 192 loaves per hour, 200 loaves per hour, 330 loaves per hour, and 660 loaves per hour. These, we have structured this way to make it easy for you so that you don't have to start scratching your head. What do I need to achieve, let's say, a thousand loaves per hour? What equipment, ABC? So we've packaged all this equipment into a complete 
bakery set to make it easy for you when you reach this particular stage that you are when it comes to bakery setup. And remember, if I was doing a thousand loaves, I'll go for these 90 loaves so that I, in 10, 11 hours, I reach my target and I'll spend uh, like, for example, 1.2 million shilling and so on and so forth. So this is an example of uh, the, the, the kind of setup that you're talking about. And actually on the big website, we've gone further. You can request a quote. You can enter your full name, Simon Karinga, for example. I want to request this quote, so I enter my phone number, 72305647. Email address, Simon K at bequeath.co.ke I'm keying in my email address then mega package 90 loaves then I say please send me this quote please send me this quote when you do that when you press this button request quote the red button automatically that quotation is sent to you you will receive thank you your inquiry was sent successfully with details below. Name Simon Karinga, email Simon K B at Bequave, telephone number, the package I requested. So check your email now. So the next thing I do, I'll go to my Outlook, my Gmail or whichever email I'm using, and I'll be able to see that email if it has been sent. So I'm checking. Yeah, I see. I've just received an email with the package attached. New inquiry, dear Simon Karinga, please find attached quote for package as per your request. So you see it's attached, 90 loaves per hour. We always attach a cake bakery startup package and so on. So that's why Bakewave has organized itself so that when you reach this point, it makes it easy for you to proceed to the next uh, step. Now, having said that, I want to wind up this discussion talking about bakery automation because it entails machine. You automate your bakery sections using machines or equipment that are more advanced than the basic equipment we've talked about. Remember, for basic equipments are oven, mixer, slicer, prover, uh, and cake mixer, and so on. But there is another set of equipment we call automation equipment in that I can automate each section of my bakery and cut down on labor and improve the accuracy. But as you've seen in our packages, we did not recommend you to automate when you are starting because automation equipment are very expensive. I can tell you there is no machine for automation for each section that is less than 500,000 Kenya shilling. So, why have we not put it in our startup? Because we don't want you to start to automate your bakery and you don't know the effect, the reaction of the market. For example, in my mind, I'm thinking, ah, this market will take a, th have a thousand loaves. But when I start, all customers say, do you have buns? Do you have buns? Do you have scones? Do you have... So I realized this market is not according to what I thought. So I need to go back to the drawing board. So what would have happened if I bought DAF divider, if I bought a volumetric divider, an automatic unit for bread automation? It would have been a waste of money. So that's why we recommend you, after you run your bakery for one or two months, you are now in a position to automate the particular sections because you'll have known what the market wants. In this case, I'll come back to Bakewave and buy what we call Band divider and rounder. Band divider and rounder will round the bars, the scones, anything to do with bands, scones, will round it in every like three, uh, five seconds, 30 pieces. That is almost impossible when it comes to human labor because you have to cut each band on its own, wait on the machine, then start to roll that. It takes a lot of time and this automation comes in phase two after you've run your bakery for at least one, two, even six months so that you actually automate on a machine that you will use, not to, to preempt and buy the wrong machine for automation. You have lost your money. And that's why we don't recommend you to automate in the first stage. Now, 
that's as far as Barnes is concerned. If I started my bakery and I realized, oh, this bakery is tailored for loaves. I started with a thousand loaves, but I see my demand is going up. I need to produce 5,000 loaves. In that case, I need to upgrade my oven, for example, to a rotary powered diesel oven. And I need to upgrade my dove cutting area into what we call dove processing unit. The processing unit, automatic door processing unit is, uh, con contains four machines, divider, molder, rounder, and uh, molder. Those four machines work together in unison to process 2,000 loaves per hour. So it means in 10 hours, I'll do 20,000 loaves. So in that case, if I find that my market is, the demand is going up, I will need to think about automation. But that is after two, three, six months after running, and I know that my market lies on, on bread because different markets will have different requirements. If I found that on the same note, these rotary ovens, I need to buy 20 of them. Then I see, oh, it's too much. So why don't I replace all these rotary ovens with one tunnel automat automated oven that uh, even saves more power and energy because it's one oven where the bread moves uh, through a tunnel system. So that, that is another issue you need to consider, but such ovens cost so much money and that's why it's not important to consider when you are starting in the first place. You need to run your bakery for several months or years before you do that. And what about if I started my bakery and I realized, oh, this market is for cookies. I'll, I'll, in, I'll go back to the drawing board, come back to Bakewave and ask for what we call a cookie dosing unit. The same case, if I found this market is for cakes, I'll come back to Bakewave and ask for a cake dosing unit. This equipment will automatically cut your costs increase your accuracy which is very very important that is one of the main reasons of automation because remember each baked product must be weighed before being molded or before being put in the prover in the oven so that step of weighing if your bakers make a mistake on every grammage you can lose a lot of product in a day even a thousand loaves because if they made a mistake of five gram per loaf and you're producing 100,000 loaves, you can imagine how much loaves you will lose in a day. That's why automation comes in hand, and it's very important when it comes to efficiency, accuracy, and improving your profit margin, and maintaining consistency of your product. So I'd like to end this discussion here, but stay focused, stay tuned for our next episode, which is coming soon.